Handling a TFT display by a Marco controller requires a big RAM footprint, memory management, a lot of coding, and a proper user interface design, which is nothing but a pain in the ass. But with this versatile open source display graphic library, you can literally take your TFT display to the next level. Today in this video, I'm using 1.9 inch 8 bit TFT display with ESP32 S3 development board from Lilygo to integrate LVGL library to ESP IDF and use it to design my own interface so we can see what this development board is capable of with the brand new ESP32 S3 microcontroller. We have got a lot to display today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is not only a professional and high quality printed circuit board manufacturer, but they also have CNC cutting, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, and injection molding services. So it's the right choice where you can get all your project components from one single place. And they are now having discount on four layer and six layer PCB manufacturing. So don't miss your chance. All right, so here we are with the ESP32 S3 T display development board from uh, Lilygo. Uh, it has 1.9 inch 8 bit LCD. Uh, that means the MCU is connected over parallel interface to the LCD. Uh, so here is the development board we have here. Uh, we have here the. Here we can see the ESP32 S3 microcontroller as you can see the board does not have a frame buffer this means the CPU MCU is connected directly to the to this display uh, 8 bit display that means uh, we can show 256 colors different colors so uh, it has a USB type C so when we connect it to a power supply it has a quite decent display as we can see now it's scanning for Wi-Fi network uh, it's scanning for this network which does not exist it's from the manufacturer so we need to change this So now that our development kit uh, was not able to join uh, the Wi-Fi network and it's asking uh, to do provisioning using ESP Touch app from mobile phone so we can enter the Wi-Fi credential. Uh, so let's do that and see what this development kit is capable of. Alright, so here I've downloaded ESP Touch app from the Apple Store. So let's have a look at it. Uh, we get to ESP Touch, and as you can see, the application detects the SID I'm connected to. Uh, so now let me uh, enter my password. Alright, so I've just confirmed. So as you can see now, uh, the our development board has managed to enter my Wi-Fi network and I suppose that it's getting the time from the internet right now but uh, as you may have noticed uh, there is different in the time zone I suppose this is the time zone of China uh, I'm in a different time zone so if we press on this button we can see some demo Yeah, the display looks uh, quite decent, actually. And here we can see the chipset, ESP32 S3, with PS RAM, uh, 8 kilobytes. I suppose that is internal uh, PS RAM. Uh, and we have flash of uh, 8 kilobytes, and it's continuously measuring the supply voltage using analog to digital converter. 
All right, so as you can see, the transaction between pages is quite smooth. And the resolution of the display is quite good, actually. Yes, so now it's time to jump into code and write our own application so we can display custom stuff and make this board more useful with useful chronics. All right, so now I've flashed my own firmware on this LilyGo display development kit uh, in order to show the animations that I've worked on. Uh, so I have two pages. One is uh, a meter showing random values. You can see the movement is quite smooth and the transaction between pages uh, is also good. So here I have my channel logo with a continuously rolling text. Uh, I've used LVGL library, which makes everything easy to handle and allows the user, which is us, to do more complex stuff in a short amount of time. Uh, it needs a bit of time uh, to get used to it actually. So today we are going to have a look at it and go through the code that I've used in order to display uh, these animations. So let's jump into our code and discuss things in more detail. All right, so here we are with the ESP32 code. I'm using ESP IDF. If you are in Arduino development uh, framework, you can transfer this into your code after understanding it. Uh, as you can see, I'm using Espressif IDE. Uh, it's actually nothing but a copy from uh, Eclipse. So there is nothing new to deal with. So let's move on. But first, let me change the font size so you guys can see clearly the code. All right, so now I think this is better. All right, so first, let's start with the main. Uh, first, we can see the GPIO configuration. These pins are going to control the LCD backlight and uh, power and so on. Uh, after that, we can see the LCD pin configuration over here. And these pins are going to be the LCD data pins. Uh, we have two pins for blue three pins for uh, red and three pins for green so we have eight pins for LCD parallel interface and here we can see the bus width 8 bits and the other important parameters that I want to mention here are the LCD clock rate and we have it here it's around uh, 6.5 megahertz which is quite low compared to SPI interface because here we have the advantage of uh, parallel interface and the other thing is the bit per pixel you can notice that it's uh, 16, not 8, because we are taking into consideration the alpha parameter, which determines how transparent a pixel is uh, within an image. I'm going to explain this part in more details when it comes to image display part. Uh, and here we can see the LCD uh, controller part. And the rest of the main function is related to LVGL library configuration. Uh, LVGL stands for light and versatile graphics library. Everything related to this library is explained in details uh, in this uh, website. I'm going to put a link to it in the video description so you can have a look at it. This library allows embedded developers to build a nicely looking user interface for RGB LCDs in a short amount of time. So let's get back to our code and see how I used it to build my application. All right, so everything related to the display LVGL user interface uh, is inside uh, these header and source files. But of course, to let LVGL library work properly, it needs a tick timer. And I've done this by initializing this task, which does nothing but handles the LVGL timer every 10 milliseconds. And as you can see, this task is handled by uh, CPU1. So I may add uh, Wi-Fi connection capability in the future and let the CPU zero handle RF uh, related tasks. So yeah, let's get back to the LVGL library and see how to implement the user interface part. So first of all, inside my application, I will be having three tile views. These tiles will be represented by uh, the pages that you can see over here. Uh, and of course, the display object is nothing but a pointer to the display that carries the related information and it's used to form everything that's going to be shown on the display. So with the concept of these style views, imagine that I have three displays and I can switch between them whenever I want. So let's take this as an example. Uh, on the first page, I'm creating an image and, put, and placing it on the center of the display. 
So now let's see what I have on the other page. On the next page, uh, I have a meter created, placed at the center of the display, and then its size is determined. And here we have the scale related uh, parameters. So as you can see, I have one image at one page and meter at the second page. There are other important parameters like styles, which are used to change the characteristics of an object. Just like we can see here, I'm changing the color and the font of a text using this style. And here I'm changing the color of the background uh, to make it black. Again, I'm using background style. The text that I'm talking about are created inside the timer. Uh, and we can see them uh, here. Uh, see, we can see one of them uh, just over here, use for electronics uh, text. And the other one is uh, the continuously rolling part, which is this one. And we can see the style added to the object uh, in these functions. So, in overall, having an image and two texts will form to us this page. So, yes, this was inside the LVGL timer. LVGL timers are nothing but software timers, they can be created. Uh, so just like this one animation timer uh, where the arc animation is uh, done let me show you that part so here in the software timer callback function uh, a count value is passed over the callback function and here we see the arcs angles and rotations changes depending on the past count value which will give us such an animation at the startup time because this timer callback will be executed every 20 milliseconds just like we have set it over here and when the animation period is done uh, the animation timer is deleted and a new timer is created in order to change the background and browse the tile views that we have created before every 10 seconds and we see this over here so whenever this callback is executed a new tile view will be shown and yeah that was the overall application that i have built using lvgl uh, library i'm still of course at the early stages of being expert in this library uh, but i wanted to share my experiment uh, using it uh, with you guys so you may implement even something more uh, creative and better and of course i'm planning to use this library in my future projects so i can build things that are more advanced and share it with you guys as open source so this brings me to the end of this video. If you have learned something new, please like, share and subscribe and tell your friends about useful electronics. Stay tuned and bye bye.